You doing what you need to do to become the best version of yourself will not only help you succeed in life, it'll help you make new friends and potentially meet a new partner. Whether you want to become like Khabib, Alex Homozy, Bruce Lee, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, even Dana White, learn from the best to become the best. Posture and movement. Now let's look at Conor McGregor, how he enters the room. Now I wouldn't enter the room like this, but if you feel comfortable doing it, do it. He shows confidence, he shows arrogance, he's not scared of anyone. There's some things that we can take from this. So how would you enter the room? First, you want to start off with your chin up. This will allow you to scan the room. You can see if anyone is interested in you or if you're interested in anyone. If no one catches your eye or no one pays attention to you, that's no problem at all. By scanning the room, you can put yourself in the best place possible. But also when your chin is up, you're demonstrating high levels of confidence and ability. Another benefit by keeping your chin up, it improves your posture. If you put your chin down, you naturally go down into a curl down position. But if you bring your chin up, you notice you will naturally open your shoulders and hold a wider, better frame. Every time you feel like your chin is falling or you're just losing a bit of confidence, I want you to just breathe through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. That will not only reset your posture, it will calm you down. When you're walking into the room, walk at a nice, slow, smooth pace. Don't let the environment dictate your pace. Walking at your own pace lets people know you're in control and you know what you're doing. Fast twitchy, rapid movements rushing through the room not only makes people nervous, it makes them anxious too. That's why slowing down your movements will ease the people around you, allow everyone to become a little bit more relaxed and they're more likely to open up to you. The hands. Now you will see me move my hands a lot and we'll get into that a little bit later, but let's talk about the handshake. So you've entered the room, you're about to make that first handshake. The simplest thing has been over-engineered. Do you go close? Do you go far? Do you have your palm up? Do you have your palm down? Do you squeeze really hard? Do you do it gently? A floppy one. The simplest thing has been overcomplicated. But a bad handshake is very bad to recover from. People do remember a bad handshake, so make sure it's a good one. So when you're shaking someone's hand, keep it nice and simple. Go straight in and give it a firm squeeze. Now you're gonna get some people out there that are gonna try showing you that they're alpha and they're gonna really try squeezing your hand. If they do, they squeeze back. One little technique for squeezing. Now I used to train Japanese Jiu Jitsu with a guy called Trev Roberts, seventh dan Jiu Jitsu instructor. Absolutely amazing guy. He taught me how to hold a samurai sword. Now the samurais hold the sword with the three fingers and the palm of the hand and that's what they have there. That's what you see that striking action. You get all your strength from this area. Now I want you to try a little activity. Get your hand and squeeze with all your fingers. You'll feel these are pretty much doing nothing. So if you really want to get that grip on and you really want to squeeze tight, just go in with those three fingers and give it a good squeeze. Try that and let me know the difference in the comments. Now, when it comes to shaking a woman's hand, I think you should go in with a firm, solid shake. No floppiness, but don't try crushing her hands on the first date. It will not only ruin the date, you might end up spending the evening in A&E, but you wanna go with a firm shake. And if it warrants it, pull it towards you and show your dominance. Hand gestures. I love telling stories with my hands. You can say so much with your hands. They're so unique and they can portray so much. The hands can show love and empathy just by the touch, but can also cause pain by rolling them into a fist and striking someone. After this, you'll never look at your hands the same again. When we touch our loved ones, we can transfer energy through our hands. And when we're angry, we can make them into balls of rock. That's why they're so precious to hands. So make sure you use them when you're trying to communicate your message. Now there's one wrong way you can use your hands and that's pointing. Pointing is frowned upon. People do not like pointing. And when you point, it just makes people uncomfortable. So instead of pointing, use your hands like this. So if you want to say, yeah, the hospital is that way. Instead, the hospital is just around the corner. Just by changing your fingers from a point to fingers that are slightly curled in, 
you become a lot more relaxed, the environment becomes a lot easier, you make people more comfortable. So changing your hand position can be very important. Now if you're in a threatening situation and you need to be a bit more aggressive, then yeah, point, use it, it's quite a good thing to do. But if you're in a calm situation, you're telling a story, or you're trying to chat up a girl, or you're trying to make conversation with someone, don't point, use the back of your fingers and just use that to tell your story, to exaggerate everything that you need to do and to put your point across. You can also interlace your fingers, what I learned from the FBI agent, it just changes the environment, it changes the mood. And as you're watching this, you'll know, because when I say you need to watch this, instead I can just say, you need to watch this because you will learn something. That's why changing the way you act with your hands can change the whole conversation. It can show you as more confident, more easy to be around, and just present you a lot better. Next thing we're gonna discuss is steepling. Once you see this, it cannot be unseen. Steepling is putting your fingers together and pointing them upwards. This not only shows confidence, it shows authority as well. You'll notice the infamous man himself, Tate, does this a lot. He does it with his single fingers. You can do it with double, triple, quadruple. You can do it with how many fingers you want. You can point it in the sky. You can point it towards people. But this shows a lot of confidence. So you'll notice a lot of high value, successful people doing it. Not just the Tate's. If you start watching the internet, you'll start to notice a lot of people do this. Hiding your hands, putting your hands in your pocket, not only makes you look nervous, it shows that you have low confidence. That's why you should always have your hands exposed. The next time you don't know where to put your hands, all I want you to do is put your fingers together and put them in front of you. Now you can do steepling in many ways. You can do it a single finger, double, triple, quadruple. But this will just show that you've got confidence and authority. Eye contact is so important. You can look into a woman's eye and you can actually penetrate her soul. But eye contact can be very difficult, but if you can maintain good eye contact, it will not show you got confidence, it'll make people trust you and wanna spend time with you. You can use this one trick that will make it easier. Just draw a triangle on their face. You go from eyes, lips, back to eyes. Eyes, neck, back to eyes. Eyes, shoulders back to eyes and you can continue to do this triangle whenever it feels awkward you don't want to be doing this all evening because you will look a little bit crazy but you can just be looking into her eyes having the conversation then you can look at her lips and then you can go back to the eyes have the conversation carry on have a joke have a smile and then you can look at her neck and then go back to the eyes. But when you're talking to another guy, you definitely wanna maintain that eye contact. There's nothing awkward or there's nothing weird in it. Maintaining eye contact with a guy shows that you're confident and you're listening to what they have to say. The power of the vocals. You can be quiet and confident. Don't mistake the loud guy in the corner of the room as being the most confident guy. But studies have shown that high pitched voices are deemed as less confident. That's why the way you speak is very important. So let's practice some voice techniques I learned from the FBI agent. Let's just say no, no, no. And now let's say it like this, no, no, no. See the difference in the pitch? When I had the higher pitch, my hand was closed, my hand was close to me. But when I went into that deeper vocal cord, I opened my hand and it was in front of me, showing more confidence and more authority. Let's practice that again. No. No. Keep practicing that every morning and you will notice your voice will change over the coming days. If you've got a very high pitch voice, I recommend practicing this two to three times a day. Let's just practice that one more time. No. 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 I'm slowing it down. I'm making it a little bit deeper. I'm showing authority in my voice and I'm commanding respect. My fingers are open. I'm showing I'm confident in my own ability and I know what I want. The tone of your voice is a great way to show confidence, but also the timing is very important. Great speakers like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Winston Churchill, all use timing and pauses to show confidence. So the next time you're about to tell that story, don't hesitate to go at your own pace and take breaks in between to show your confidence and get your point across. The best way to improve your confidence is to practice and prepare. 
If you've got to do a public speaking event, you practice your speech a thousand times. You practice in front of the mirror. You practice in front of the camera. You record yourself and you watch yourself back. Non-verbal communication is so important. And by adopting some of the things we've discussed today, it will definitely increase your confidence. Now, if fear is one of those things holding you back, you might want to check this video out.